Well, this is it. The final chapter. Well, except for the instrumentals. Oh, and the compilations. Oh, can't forget the soundtracks. Oh, and we got to have the holiday albums, too. Oh, and the comedy and spoken word. Oh, and my box sets, too. Other than that, totally the last chapter. Greetings, one and all, and welcome back to Tom's Hit Parade. By the way, I invite you to hit that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up if you like what you see, share this video with your friends, and leave me your thoughts down in the comments section. I'd really appreciate it. So yes, the final chapter of the rock and vocals section of my whole darn CD collection. Yes, for the last, I don't know, 30, 40 years it feels like. Okay, no, it doesn't feel like that long, but anyway. Uh, I have been showing you 90 CDs in my whole CD collection, not so guilty pleasures and everything. I'm not hiding anything from you. Uh, and in my opinion, there are no such thing as guilty pleasures. There's just not so guilty pleasures. You like what you like, right? Uh, but anyway, uh, so yes, this is, we've reached the end of the alphabet. Uh, and it's kind of funny. I've been showing you 90 CDs, as I said, in each chapter. And it just so happens that the end of my rock and vocal section uh, consists of this final block being 87 CDs. So just a few shy of 90. Uh, but yes, of course, I uh, almost always go over the 90 CDs by showing you at the beginning the stuff I have acquired in the previous sections of the alphabet uh, that I got since my last video, if what I'm saying makes any sense at all. Anyway, so I thought I would go and uh, show you those uh, recent arrivals first, as I always do in just about every episode. First, I've got three uh, recent releases. These are kind of like hot off the pressers, presses, basically. Hot off the pressers? I don't know what that means. Uh, Bare Naked Ladies in Flight, their latest album. I've actually enjoyed this one on its first listen better than the last two or three albums of theirs. So uh, I hopefully that bodes well for its long-term appeal to me. And then I didn't even realize this one was out, and I thought I would give it a try. Uh, the Brothers Osborne, their self-titled album, their, their newest release. Uh, I liked Skeletons, not a whole lot, but I I liked it enough to go ahead and give this one a try as well. And then we have Guts by Olivia Rodrigo. I apologize for the glare. I'm, I try to aim the CD so, so you don't see that. Uh, or, or the camera light or anything else. But anyway, Guts by Olivia Rodrigo. I like this one um, just as much as Sour, if not maybe a little bit better. So uh, I think she is in it for the long haul as an artist to be taken seriously. Uh, she's very impressive. And then the uh, that's the newest releases. These are older things that I just happened to add to the collection. Uh, Catherine McPhee, an American Idol. She was the runner-up to Taylor Hicks, if I remember correctly. Uh, this is her sophomore album, Unbroken. Uh, lots of good stuff on that uh, album. A little bit more of a pop. Yeah, a bit more of a pop. She was a little bit rock in her debut, went a little bit more pop on that album. And then her third album, Hysteria, uh, where she goes a little bit more back toward the rock um, maybe a little, a little bit of electronica rock type of stuff here. Oh, and there was one song. Was it on this album? It was on... Oh, this one. She does a cover of, and I forgot to look up who was the artist that did the original song, Brand New Key. It was a song from back in the 60s. Oh, I've got a pair of brand new roller skates. You've got a brand new key. She does a cover of that on that album, so it's kind of like out of the blue sort of thing. It doesn't really go with the rest of the album. It's just so it's just kind of a, I mean, that's why it was the last track, sort of a bonus track, but uh, and it caught my ear anyway. Uh, so yes, and her third album, Hysteria, pretty good. Yeah, I had bought uh, a lot of CDs on eBay by a bunch of other female artists, several of which I was uh, looking for, well, three or four of which I was looking for, and she just happened to include the these uh, Catherine McPhee CDs in there, as well, I already had her debut, so added these to the uh, uh, my collection. They're pretty good. Then we have I just picked this up a few few weeks ago, uh, the Capital Years by Frank Sinatra, a three disc set. I had just one CD of uh, was it uh, the best of the best? I think is what it was called. So I'd kind of been looking for some more Sinatra to add to my collection. Now, she can't really escape the glare on that, but yeah, there you get a an idea of uh, yeah three discs packed with his songs. I mean, hey, Sinatra needs no introduction. Excellent stuff. Another artist who arguably needs no introduction, Sly and the Family Stone. 
Uh, this is their album Stand, a, a funk and R&B classic from the late 60s. No, early, yeah, late 60s, 1969. It's got um, I Want to Take You Higher. That was a big hit, hit of theirs. Uh, Sing a Simple Song, Everyday People, another classic song of theirs. And yeah, stay put, don't flop over. That's an order. Uh, and the, uh, don't know if this was their next album. I think it was. Uh, I bought this one at the same time as Stand. Uh, there's a riot going on. Uh, this, is their, uh, this was a bit more of a uh, social commentary and activist sort of uh, album. What was there? Oh, Family Affair was one of the big hits here on this album. So, And each of these is the remastered edition with a few bonus tracks. And it will probably take me through most of the video to aim the CDs so that you don't get the uh, reflection or glare. But anyway, yeah, good stuff. And then... Uh, Sorry about the crashing, clanking CDs. And then an 80s artist uh, that well, they actually started back in the 70s, I think, The Tubes, with their album out, uh, Outside Inside. Uh, this had their big hit, She's a Beauty, on it. Uh, that was I, th I think that was their biggest hit, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, yeah, that was on the radio when I was a kid, so saw this album and I had to pick it up. And the last recent arrival here is I was kind of happy to upgrade from the one disc, I think it was the uh, Millennium Collection, 20th Century Masters, Muddy Waters. This is a two-disc anthology of his. Not huge into the blues, but uh, he is one of the orig originators of the blues. There we go. So yeah, you can kind of see the two discs. Again, two discs packed with his classic blues songs. Pardon me while I hydrate myself. So yes, those are the new uh, recent arrivals. Try and lay those down so they don't flop around. So let's go ahead and get into the final block of my rock and vocal section of my Hold On CD collection. We left off with uh, Tyrone Wells, I think, in the last video. Uh, here's a guy that I have a few CDs from, uh, and I will explain as I go. But yes, he's one of my favorite uh, artists that not a lot of people know about. Matt Wirtz is his name. And this is his album, Some Days. Excuse me. Followed by, and I, and I found that out, found that one a couple of years ago. Found this one a couple of years earlier than that. Uh, 23 Places, that's uh, his subsequent album. And then this is the album that kind of started me. It got, uh, put Matt Wirtz on my radar, so to speak. Uh, everything in between, I... I'm telling you, it's going to take most of the video for me to uh, keep away from the glare and stuff. Uh, this is just a great album. It was his first, well, not really his first major label. It was a semi-major label. It was put on put out on Network Records. But yes, this has just a bunch of great songs. It was done, this was put out in 2004. And it was one of my favorite, oh, excuse me, 2006. I thought it was 2004. Anyway, some of my favorite songs, th this is my favorite Matt Wirtz album. But uh, The Way I Feel is great. Uh, Over You is an excellent song. Uh, like the Last Time is fantastic. 519 is a great ballad, so yeah. I don't know. I would recommend starting with this one if you want to take a listen uh, out of curiosity to, to Matt Wirtz. But then this next one is a major label release. This was put out on Universal. Um, it is called Under Summer Sun. And this is actually made up of Oh yeah, I guess the light's a little, the light is a little bright. Maybe I should turn it down. I don't know. Um, so yes, this has five or six of the songs that were on everything in between, as well as a handful of new songs. So it's kind of half redundant, but I I had to pick it up, uh, being the Matt Wirtz fan. So uh, yes, very very good stuff on this one. And then his follow up album, Weights and Wings, another really really good one. Uh, let's see what were the good songs on this one. Uh, Nobody's You, I like that one. Uh, Someone Like You, I think it was the other one. I, I actually have not listened to this one in quite a while. I need to uh, refresh my memory on this one. So yeah, but yeah, it was very good. And then did I find this one at a thrift store? I can't remember. Uh, Heat Wave. This is the the latest latest of his albums that I have, and he's only put out one or two since this one. This one was, was done in twenty thirteen. So yeah. he's an excellent artist, uh, basically pop rock, singer-songwriter, 
type of stuff. That's basically what he is. Uh, he he is religious. He had it um, on his earlier albums. I think put some religious um, lyrics into his uh, songs. He wasn't you know he's not one of those praise and worship artists that you know it's like hits you over the head with the religious lyrics. You know he was always I like. I don't like Christian music, as I've mentioned before on my channel. I'm I am not a practicing Christian. I'm not religious, so the lyrical content is lost on me with Christian music, and I so I definitely stay away from the praise and worship stuff. But the stuff that Christians can get something out of the lyrics and non Christians can get something out something out of the, yeah, something out of the lyrics. I really like that stuff. So yeah, what can I say that I haven't already said? Anyway. Uh, the um, any UK fans or UK viewers out there might recognize this artist, Westlife. This is their greatest hits, Unbreakable. I used to have their uh, individual albums and just kind of, you know, became not as much of a fan as I still am. So this, the greatest hits, eventually was all I really needed. Then we have, this is actually, I think this is another British group, though they made a minor splash in the States. <laughs> Minor splash. Okay. I used the word splash. Totally did not intend for this to be a pun because their name is Wet, Wet, Wet. Yeah. Wet, splash, water, pun, not intended. Anyway, this is their album, High on the Happy Side. This one was, I think, was released in the States, but it was not very successful. Uh, Lip Service is a good song. And uh, I'm not sure if uh, none of the other songs... Uh, song titles ring a bell, but this is the one that kind of uh, um, made a little made a little inroad for them into the states. Picture this is this album, and they did a cover of "Love Is All Around" by the Trogs. That was a huge hit here in the states for them, their biggest hit. And so, if you've heard of "Wet Wet Wet," that's the song you've probably heard. And uh, let's see what is, um I guess that was the only significant song on this album, also. So yeah, like I said, I think that was in the States, that was their only hit, was their cover of Love Is All Around. And then I have uh, their subsequent album, Ten. And this one, I, let's see. Uh, Maybe I'm in Love is, that's one of my favorite songs. That might actually be more of a favorite of their songs of mine than Love Is All Around. And uh, they also do a cover of Beyond the Sea, the Bobby Darren song. So, decent stuff there. <clears throat> They're kind of like, uh, they were lumped in with Spandau Ballet, that uh, what's I guess has been called the New Romantic Sound uh, of the 80s. I'm not sure where that, well, I guess because they did a lot of ballads. Maybe that's why they're called New Romantic. Anyway, so that's what they sound like. And anyway, this is an Australian artist. I've got two of her albums, Betty Who. And she came to my attention because, if I remember correctly, actually, uh, I'll see if I can uh, find it very quickly in the liner notes. But uh, yeah, she is a pop rock artist, uh, kind of like Pink. Uh, if, if you like Pink, you might like her. Okay, I'm not going to be able to find it, I don't think. Um, but I believe there was an artist that I like who made an appearance on made an appearance on this album, or she made an appearance on their album. I can't remember. My memory is not very good today, apparently. But yes, she's great. I, I really, really like her. And I liked her enough with that album that I picked up her sub subsequent album, The Valley. Also very good. And actually, uh, Superfruit, which was the spin-off group from Pentatonix, they make an appearance on this album. So, but yeah. Oh, actually, I think, I think it was Troy Sivan. She appeared on a Troy Sivan song. That's how I found out about her. Yeah, on his album Blue Neighborhood, I believe. Hey, see. It, it's just a little slow. <laughs> the, the hamster is not running on its wheel at full capacity right now. Anyway, uh, then we have... I probably should have more stuff by these guys, but uh, for now, anyway, the hits are all I need. The Who. And this is the uh, two-disc version of their Icon uh, installment. As you can see, the, uh, yeah, the song titles there. So, so, ah, sorry. <laughs> Excellent stuff, of course. I don't need to. I don't need to talk about the who. You know who they are. And but this guy, I might need to talk to you about. I mean, need to explain who this guy is. 
He was a winner of the French version of Idol, the name of which I can't remember right now. They, did, they didn't just call it Idol Francais or anything like that, but uh, Christophe Willem is his name, and this is his uh, debut album, Inventaire Inventory. And then his... Sorry, the CDs are probably going to flop over once in a while. Um, Caffeine is his sophomore album. And then his third album, Prismophonic. Uh, very good. He's, he's a little bit artsy, uh, art poppy, kind of like uh, Rufus Wainwright, sort of. Uh, but yeah, he's I, I enjoy him. He's got more albums than that out, but I just, I just don't have an, uh, any more of them. I just have the first three. Then this one, this one was in a bargain bag, I believe. Dar Williams, uh, Mortal City. Good stuff. I don't know what else I can say about her. Then we have a classic crooner from the 50s and 60s, Andy Williams, 16 Most Requested Songs. Don't know what else to say about him either. He's, he's pleasant to listen to when you just want that easy listening stuff playing in the background. Then we're getting into some classic country here. Hank Williams, his 40 greatest hits. Yes, uh, two, two discs full of his uh, hits there. <clears throat> and then we're coming on to some Robbie Williams, uh, formerly of Take That, became a, a rather su successful solo artist in his own right. This is a uh, fancy-dancy hardbound book uh, edition of his Greatest Hits album, In and Out of Consciousness. It's got three CDs full of his hits. And I've got these little rice paper sleeves that I put the uh, discs into because they just they just fit into the uh, pockets on the book. So yes, just to try and save them a little bit more from scratches, that's, that's why you see this stuff sticking out the top here. Is those are rice paper sleeves that I bought. And uh, same kind of uh, packaging and stuff for... Uh, this album swings both ways, and I believe that's right. Uh, I picked up a Robbie Williams lot on of CDs on eBay several years ago, and I had ha originally had the standard version of this album and this. And actually, I think it's the same lot that the three disc version of uh, his hits was in. So yes, I, I upgraded to the deluxe editions, and yes, I first found this one out uh, not long after it was released. Uh, twenty thirteen, I think, is when it was put out. But yes, this features guest shots from, or guest appearances from, Rufus Wainwright, Michael Bublé, Lily Allen, Kelly Clarkson. So, yeah, I recommend it. If, if you see it anywhere on the shelves or whatnot, and you're, or you're just curious, uh, he sings, um, uh, what am I trying to say, uh, uh, Great American Songbook standards, you know, stuff from the 40s and 50s and stuff, covers of those songs. But uh, yeah, mostly solo, but he has, as I just mentioned, several guest appearances. So yeah, it's good stuff. I've, I've always kind of liked, uh, kind of enjoyed Robbie, Robbie Williams' stuff. And then we have a two-disc set of uh, Bob Wills and his Texas Playboys. This is a two-disc anthology from Rhino Records. And yeah, I'm not sure why they didn't just put both CDs into a single jewel case. But uh yeah, good stuff. Uh, and my, my fascination with uh, Oklahoma and specifically Tulsa kind of led me into being curious about Robbie, uh, Bob Wills. So, uh, so yeah. I've um, yeah, kind of surprised myself. If, if you had asked me 10 years ago if I was going to get into so much classic country, I would have thought you were crazy and would have laughed the question off. But now, lo and behold. Anyway. Next artist up is Wilson Phillips, uh, classic early 90s, early 90s or late 80s, I can't remember, um, female, three-part vocal harmony. They are the daughters of Brian Wilson of the Beach Boys and um, Michelle Phillips of the Mamas and the Papas, so harmonies in their blood. And yes, this is actually the two-disc uh, reissue on uh, Caroline Records that they put out Oh, four or five years ago, I think. So yes, a bunch of uh, B-sides and remixes and stuff on the second disc. So yeah, and a remastered album on disc one. Then I've got their subsequent, their follow-up album, Shadows and Light. 
and their reunion album after, yeah, Shadows and Light came out in like 92 or 94. Yeah, 1992. And then they came out with this album in 2004. So 12 years. Uh, they came out with California, which was a uh, covers album of... Actually, hang on one second here. Turn that light down just a little bit. There we go. Now we can see the covers a little better. Uh, covers of songs that not only that their parents made famous, but other artists from the 60s and era, era did. Uh, Monday, Monday, they cover a uh, Mamas and the Papas song. And uh, In My Room, a Beach Boys song. They do, uh, I think, at least a couple of Beach Boys songs and at least a couple of Mamas and Papas songs. In there, so, yeah. Going back to literally their musical roots, as in their blood roots. And then and another album, which was also a covers album, and they actually put one or two of the same songs, you know, redid them for this album, Dedicated. Uh, it's also it's a great album. I mean, I can't get enough of their vocal harmonies. I mean, they're just great. So I could hear, I could listen to them singing anything, and I would be satisfied. So, yeah. And this, I believe, was a, was it a Barnes & Noble or a Target? Some store, um exclusive edition that has two bonus tracks. You can see them down on the bottom. Monday, Monday, and Don't Worry, Baby. So, yeah. Good stuff. Now, this artist, uh, a lot of you probably won't know who these, this guy is. He was the winner of a South African version of Idol. One of these days, I'm going to do a uh, My Favorite World Idol Artists video. And uh, prob it'll probably be like a top 10 or top 15 countdown because I have quite a little collection, as you've seen over these chapters, collection of uh, artists from the various uh, idol franchises around the world. Uh, and this one, his name is Heinz Winkler. And uh, yes, he's from, uh, I think I mentioned, South Africa. So uh, yeah, don't know if it's totally kosher to be talking about a white artist, you know, when being, you know, South African. Yes, they, were, they were the colonizers after all, so... And then I've also got his uh, sophomore album, Come Alive. And typical idol stuff, you know, pop, you know, pop rock stuff. Very radio-friendly pop rock type of stuff. Yeah, so. <clears throat> this guy, though, is... He is British, but he became very popular in France, I believe. He's got quite a following in France. I found this CD in the budget bin at um, a uh, Everyday Music up in Portland several years ago fell in love with it and uh, went online and bought his uh, subsequent two albums, Charlie Wilson. Yeah, Charlie Wilson. Uh, this is his first album, Hero. No, Hobo. Sorry. So I'm going to need to check my eyesight at some point, My uh, get my eyeglass prescription updated, apparently. But uh, yeah, a little bit quirky in his style. I'm not sure how to describe it. But uh, yes, yeah, just very, very tuneful and... Uh, very witty, witty lyrics. Uh, oh, one of my favorite songs on this album is Kick the Bucket. And uh, My Life as a Duck. There's another song on here. So, as you can tell uh, from the song titles, um, it's a little bit uh, a little bit interesting. So, yeah, I would recommend checking him out. And then this, I think, is my favorite of his albums. This is a sophomore album, Running Still. It's excellent stuff. Uh, Hello Alone is great. Um, Where Can I Buy Happiness? And can't remember what the other songs on here were uh, were the ones that I really enjoyed. It's been a while since I've listened to this, and that's I'm I'm feeling a bit of shame ashamed of that, just because I remember loving the album so much. I need to go back and listen to it some more. And then his third album, Curio City. I guess that's a play on the word curiosity. Curiosity. Very clever. As, as I said, he's clever with the lyrics and the song titles and stuff. So, yeah, lots of good stuff. And let me pause and take a drink here. My throat's getting a little bit dry. Mm. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then we're back into another World Idol uh, winner. Yeah, I think it was a winner. Uh, this is from the Norway version of Idol. Alexander Vith is his name. I assume that's how you pronounce it. Vith, I'm not sure. But his debut album, Coming Home. And there was actually 
His first single was actually not on the CD, not even on the Japanese version of it. So I found the promo version of it somewhere online, and uh, it, it's also Japanese release, so I just kind of piggybacked it on the CD. A little, a little too perfect. Th that one is the most radio-friendly, you know, kind of cookie-cutter sound of any of his songs, but it was so catchy I had to have it in some form, so there you go. And then his sophomore album, Still Awake. Good stuff. And his third album, which is self-titled. So, yeah. Kind of as with, as I found with most Norwegian artists, uh, you know, once they get beyond, you know, breaking out in the radio-friendly stuff, they get into a bit of a, a bit more of a moody, I, I, I want to say darker sound, but that's not really not quite the appropriate word, but just a little bit more moody, a little a little deeper, more nuanced, if you will, sound. So yeah. I, I would recommend, you know, if you if that sounds intriguing to you, check out some of these Norwegian pop artists. You might be surprised. Then we have a uh, an artist we uh, a lot of us know who this guy is, Bill Withers. Uh yes he did what was uh, my brain is just not working today. Ain't no sunshine. That's this song that he did. I mean, he did, did several hit songs. Use Me, another great, great song of his. And uh, I would go on searching the track list, but I don't want to waste time in the video. It's going to be long enough as it is. But yes, Bill Withers, fantastic R&B and soul artist. Excellent stuff. Oh, it is the uh, two-disc essential volume. There you go. And then one... Uh, Fairly early bargain bag find, uh, Wolfkin, with their album Brand New Pants. Uh, haven't listened to this one in a while. I need to. So, yeah. Good. And then we have some Stevie Wonder. I actually do not have his that classic album trilogy or however many, that, that run of albums that he did in the 70s, Talking Book and all those. Still don't have those. I'm pretty sure sometime in the next few years I will eventually pick those up. It's just, it's it's been nagging at me to do so. But for now, this and the next CD you'll see are all that I have of Stevie Wonder. But yes, his uh, song review. And this is the Japanese version, as you can see with the uh, Obi strip. So it's got a slightly different track listing than the uh, American version. And... Sorry, I hope you can see that. I, I already turned down the light. I don't want to turn it down too much. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then his, uh, actually his most recent album, which is from 2005. I don't know if he's decided to retire from recording albums or what, but uh, yes, A Time to Love. This is his most recent studio album. And, uh, excuse me, the single So What the Fuss is one of my favorite songs. Uh, such a favorite of mine, in fact, that I actually uh, got the CD single of it, as this is the uh, back panel of the CD single, and I piggybacked it onto the jewel case. So, yeah. Not sure why I love that song so much, but I do. Then we have um, this guy. There was a TV show back when I watched back in the early 80s when I was a kid, and before any of us really knew better, The Dukes of Hazard. Uh, yeah. Silly, silly show. It hasn't really aged terribly well, but anyway. Uh, one of the stars was John Schneider. He played Bo Duke, and the guy that played Luke Duke was a guy named Tom Wopat. And so, yes, uh, this is an album of his. I'm not sure how many albums he's done besides this. I've, I meant to look, and I've, maybe I did look, and it's just, the information has just went right out of my ears. But, uh, yes, he covers some uh, Great American Songbook type songs on this album. It's got a very good voice. I I found this, I think I found this at a uh, thrift store and just decided, hmm, I remember the guy, so picked it up out of curiosity and was uh, surprised at his uh, vocal talent. So, good stuff. And then this was a bargain bag find from earlier this year, I think, or late last year. Abdel Wright. He's got a little bit of a, uh, kind of like a folkier version of uh, Lenny Kravitz, sort of. So, yeah. Very good stuff. Really enjoyed that one. And then a uh, here's an artist that I discovered by way of my sister's 
CD collection, which I inherited. Uh, yes, my sister had Liz Wright's debut album, Salt, in her collection. Really enjoyed it. It was one of the, one of my one of the CDs out of her collection that I most enjoyed. Uh, very, very good stuff. Kind of uh, jazzy, folky stuff. Uh, a little bit like... Her name was just in my... Oh, Sade. A little bit like Sade, just not quite as uh, Bossa Nova-ish or that kind of stuff. So, But yes, fantastic stuff. And the song Salt is excellent. If you listen to one song of hers, listen to that one. But yes, I liked her so much that I picked up her sophomore album, Dreaming, Dreaming Wide Awake, just as good as her debut, and The Orchard. She actually actually gets a little bit into gospel-type music, uh, starting with this album. Um, don't mind it much, because she's just such an, such an appealing artist, um, you know, otherwise, that I just don't really mind her delving into the, into the gospel on this. I don't know why I'm having trouble speaking today. It's just kind of weird. Anyway, so yes, that is my Liz Wright collection. Then we have X Ambassadors. Uh, they kind of struck me as uh, struck me a little bit as kind of like Imagine Dragons, which does not surprise me because I think it was, I think, um, what's his name, Dan Reynolds, the uh, frontman for Imagine Dragons. He had something to do with uh, getting them noticed, I think. But anyway, they're not bad. Uh, this is that's their album, VHS, their debut album. And their sophomore album, Orion, which I found this at a uh, at a thrift store, the Target edition, still sealed. So I decided to pick it up, give it a try, totally not knowing what it was, and uh, I was impressed. Not sure if these will survive the next uh, CD pruning or not, but uh, we'll see. Okay, now this next artist. <clears throat> He should probably belong in the comedy section, and that kind of gives away who this artist is. But honestly, there are a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, if you have seen these guys live, you know what incredibly talented musicians this guy's backing band are. I mean, not only can they imitate any genre of music, but they're just so great at playing their instruments. And two or three of the band members have done side projects and... Uh, I, ha I have not listened to any of them. I really ought to, as big a, a, as big a fan of the band as I am. I really should. But uh, if their talent on stage uh, in the venue that I've seen them in is any indication, their solo albums probably kick butt. But anyway, and the other reason why these guys are in my pop and rock A to Z and not my comedy section is because I don't have room for them in my comedy section. <laughs> Yay, practicality. So yes, practicality does pay a, play a part in this. I'm talking about Weird Al Yankovic, of course. Uh, a lot of you probably know who he is. Don't require any further explanation, so I'll just rifle through them. Uh, in 3D, his sophomore album. And I bought his uh, squeeze box, the uh, complete works of Weird Al Yankovic, the big, big box set that he sold through his website. Um, perhaps if I bought it a year or two later, I would have bought the vinyl version, but I bought the CD version, and I gave the original CDs to... A friend of mine, and so I put the the box set versions of the CDs into the original jewel cases. So yeah. So yes, if if you're the one who gets these CDs when I go to the Great Beyond or something, just be aware they are not the original CDs. They are the squeeze box CDs. Uh, same track listings. It's just they're remastered. So anyway, ah. Uh, Dare to be stupid. This is probably my favorite Weird Al Yankovic album. This is his third album. I've got Polka Party. Even worse. Yeah. Don't fall over, I'm telling you. Uh, UHF, original soundtrack and other stuff. And then Off the Deep End. Alapalooza. Bad Hair Day. As you can kind of tell, I'm a huge Weird Al Yankovic fan. Running with Scissors. Possibly my favorite Weird Al album cover is Running with Scissors. And then Poodle Hat. And we have uh, Straight Out of Linwood. Alpocalypse. Actually, no, this might be my favorite. Because, you know, you've got the three uh, Soldiers of Doom from Satan's Army, and then Weird Al in his. Jeerful Hawaiian shirt, uh, waving happily. 
And then we've got Mandatory Fun. And uh, no, this is not a European edition or anything that came in a uh, Super Jewel case. I actually uh, fit, fitted the inserts from the original CD onto a, into a Super Jewel case just because I had some spare Super Jewel cases, and I like this album so much that I wanted to put it in a Super Jewel case. I wish they still made Super Jewel cases, because I would... No. I, I could easily replace all of my CDs in Super Jewel cases. They're, they're so durable, and uh, I just like the way they look with those rounded corners. Anyway. Uh, that's actually not the end. That's the end of my Weird Al Yankovic albums, but I have a couple of extra things in here. Uh... The Night Santa Went Crazy, and this one, did I piggyback this one? Oh, no, I didn't. Oh, no, that's right, never mind. Um, I got this one in a swag bag for being a VIP attendee of his uh, ridicu Ridiculously Self-Indulgent Ill-Advised Vanity Tour. And yes, this one has both of his Christmas singles in one handy-dandy CD single. So, yes, I've got them on their respective albums, but still. <clears throat> and then this one, uh, those of you who have the box set or know about it, the Squeeze Box Complete Work Set, know that there was a Rarities CD that also came with it. And of course I had to put it in its own jewel case. Medium Rarities. Oh, and this DVD is... Um, well, maybe I'll explain it later. Um, if you'd like me to tell you the story about the DVD that's in here, which I actually need to burn onto a label DVD so I can actually print a label onto it. Okay, I'll tell you about it. Um, with the build-up to the release of Squeezebox, he did a bunch of videos on uh, on YouTube that talked about, um, that went over trivia about each individual album, and then uh, looks at uh, John Bermuda Schwartz's Weird Al archive in his garage. He he collected basically every piece of Weird Al Yankovic memorabilia that was ever released. He kept a one specimen of, and so he went through the, the archive and, you know, other little behind-the-scenes things about it. And so I took all those video clips and uh, saved them because I have a uh, one of those little uh, plugins on my browser that can, that can save YouTube videos. Don't tell anyone. Uh, and burned them all onto a DVD that I can watch on my computer or on my TV. So that's what that DVD is for. Anyway, but yes, medium rarities, I... Uh, got an image of the cover art and decided to put it in a chubby jewel case along with a couple of uh, CD singles that I have. Just to save a little shelf space, I put the Gump and um, Headline News CD singles in the same package. They are right here. And of course, you know, being the meticulous person that I am, I put all the track listings for all those on the back. So there you go. I'm a bit of a geek about that kind of stuff. Anyway, one more drink. Sorry. <clears throat> Try and get through the last third of this uh, stack fairly quickly. I don't want to make the video too long. Uh, here we have Nikki Yanofsky. She is a uh, pop artist. And uh, actually, she did a little, does a little bit more of a jazz thing on this album. She uh, does covers of some great American songbook stuff. Like uh, Take the A-Train, the uh, Benny Goodman. Uh, some, somebody do that. Uh, and uh, I Got Rhythm, God Bless the Child. So she does a lot of classic jazz and pop and soul standards on this album. Her sophomore album, I used to have it, but I don't have it anymore. But I think House of Records has it. It might actually be the one that I sold them. So I'm thinking about picking that one up again. But anyway. Uh, very good. She's a she's a Canadian artist. Shout out to Canada. Then here we have one of the best CDs or one of the best albums of the eighties, uh, "Upstairs at Eric's" by Yaz. Uh, UK fans know this group as Yazoo, I believe. That's what they call them. I, for some reason in the states they couldn't call themselves Yazoo, so they had to call themselves Yaz. But yes, some uh, two uh, two or three singles off of here uh, made the uh, made the charts here in the U.S. Uh, Don't go and only you. And uh, I thought there was another one, maybe not. And then I've got their follow-up album, You and Me Both. Now, this next artist is another artist you probably never heard of, the Yayus. 
uh, not, to con not to be confused with the Yeah, Yeah, Yeahs. Uh, totally different artists. These are a uh, kind of like a power pop, I guess you'd say, UK group. Um, they remind me of a little bit of Super Tramp and a little bit of The Feeling. I mean, you guys probably don't know who The Feeling are either, but I love this album. This was their only album, and it is one of my favorite albums of the 2000s. Absolutely love it. Every single song on here. If I were to do a video of, you know, perfect or near perfect albums, this would be in the list. Um, no, I could name the entire track list, but yes, if you can, if you can find this album on streaming or if you feel like looking up the songs on YouTube or whatever, uh, these songs will get stuck in your head for days. I'll tell you, if I could is one of my favorites, probably my favorite on the album, uh, getting up with you 15 minutes. Clifftop is a fantastic song. That might be my favorite. It's it's a tie between Clifftop and If I Could. Uh, but yes, just every single song on here, as I said, is amazing. Then we have Years and Years. This is an, an artist that you guys probably know about. Uh, this is their debut album, Communion. Great uh, synth wave, synth wave power, uh, synth wave pop, basically. And their sophomore album, Palo Santo. And their third album. Night Call. <laughs> Had to look. Oh, I guess it would have been easier to read on the cover of the album. Huh? Anyway, Night Call, their third album. Now, uh, here's a local artist, uh, local to the Eugene, Oregon area. And yes, that's one video I ought to do at some point, too, is a video about local artists or um, or well-known artists that came from Oregon. Uh, this is a group called Yeltsin. And uh, I've got two of their albums. Uh, there was a documentary that an independent filmmaker made about the House of Records, the store that I go to, and I think you can see that, you can watch that video on YouTube. It's called Walls of Sound, uh, a look at the House of Records, a look inside the House of Records. Walls of Sound is the name of it. So look it up on YouTube. Anyway, the guy uh, got the permission from the band Yeltsin to soundtrack this documentary with their songs. So that's how I found out about Yeltsin. I really enjoy their stuff. Uh, they kind of reminded me of the Connells, a favorite uh, artist of mine from the 90s. So yeah, this is their album, We Will We Will Be a Factory, and then their album, A Closer Walk With. Uh, these are the only two albums of theirs that I have. Uh, not sure if they've uh, put out more or not, but I uh, really, really enjoy both of those albums. And here's another artist. I believe this is a UK artist. Uh, again, doesn't uh, not a lot of people know about this guy, but and I can't remember how I found out about him, but his name is Yoav, and if I recall correctly, <laughs> sorry, but it's just been forever since I've listened to some of these CDs. I think this is the guy that makes a lot of, uh, he plays his songs with acoustic guitar mainly, and he does even the percussion and, and everything he does with the acoustic guitar. So it's like, he almost sounds like a one-man band. Uh, I mean, he, he probably has some backup musicians on some of these songs, but a lot of what he does is just himself and his acoustic guitar makes percussion and other stuff other sounds with his acoustic guitar. Great stuff. Um, Singer-songwriter type stuff. Um, let's see. None of the songs are coming to mind that I remember being excellent. As I've said before, that's a problem with having a CD collection this big, is so many of my CDs get neglected, and I feel, I feel really ashamed about that, and I really should... Uh, uh, explore my collection more. Maybe starting in the first of the year, maybe I'll get more of a chance to do that, as I'll explain later. Uh, Pete Yorn. I just recently found out about this guy. He's been around since, what, 2000? Uh, 2001, something like that. Uh, very, very good. I really enjoy his stuff. Uh, Music for the Morning After is his debut album. I picked up his sophomore album, The Day I Forgot. Also very, very good. Then here's an artist, uh, again, an artist you probably don't know much about. Uh, he is an uh, electro pop, electro rock sort of artist, um, da dance oriented stuff. He's uh, you can dance to a lot of his music. He calls himself Young Love, and he is a solo artist. And this is his debut album, uh, Too Young to Fight It. And yes, a lot of great stuff on here. Disco Tech is uh, very good. That's the opening track. Uh, Closer to You is great, and the title track, Too Young to Fight It. Uh, Find a New Way, Take It or Leave It is great. Mm. And both of these CDs almost ended up in my cast-offs, and I'm glad I had my second thoughts. Uh, his sophomore album, uh, One of Us, 
one of my favorite album covers of all time. Isn't that just a gorgeous picture? Don't you just love that picture? I love it. Anyway, um, more of the same as on his debut, but that's not necessarily a bad thing with uh, Young Love. Great stuff. Um, and again, this is another album that's, you know, almost every song is great. Uh, Unafraid, 1 to 10. Uh, Get Me Up, Black Boots is a great song. So, uh, yeah. <clears throat> highly, rec highly recommend checking out Young Love if you have not yet. Especially if you like the dancey, electropop kind of stuff. Then we have an artist from the 80s, Paul Young. And uh, this is his album... The Secret of, Asso of Association. This has his uh, popular song, um, Every Time You Go Away, on it. Uh, Hall & Oates made a f uh, famous cover of it. It was actually more popular than Paul Young's version, as I recall. And then we have another young artist, <laughs> in name only. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry, my voice is starting to go. Uh, we have Will Young, and this, again, another... Um, World Idol alum, the winner of the first UK Pop Idol contest, as you probably know. Uh, yes, excellent artist, great, great voice on him. Uh, pop, basically, is what he does. And his sophomore album, uh, Friday's Child. Third album, Keep On. Excellent stuff. His fourth album, Let It Go. As you can tell, I like Will Young. And his fifth album, Echoes. And that's all of his that I've got so far. Then we've got another CD uh, that was one of my favorite discoveries out of my sister's collection. I inherited this from her. Another Cup by Yusuf, the artist formerly known as Cat Stevens. Uh, excellent stuff. I, I just I did not expect this album to be nearly as good. So yes, it. Uh, and I've only got a few Cat Stevens albums. I've got T for the Tillerman and uh, Teaser and the Fire Cat and... An, an other cup, but I've also got King of Land. Oh, I've also got uh, Tea for the Tea for the Tillerman too. So I got that one too. But yes, this is his uh, most recent album, King of a Land. I like it, but it's not growing on me like I thought it would. So I don't know if this is going to be a keeper or not. But uh, still, very, just very pleasant, uplifting uh, stuff that I've kind of been needing in uh, music the last couple of years, with as crazy as the world has gotten. And now we're down to the last four CDs in my rock and pop and vocals collection. Here we have Frank Zappa, strictly commercial, the very best of Frank Zappa. Um, yes, I'm not all that much into Zappa. I only have one studio album, which I've got on vinyl, Shake Your Booty. And I've got one single also, I think. And then this uh, compilation, and that's all the Frank Zappa that I've got. He just hasn't... Uh, I'm hoping that this is one of the artists that will eventually just click with me and I'll di finally discover how amazing he is. Hasn't happened yet. And then I've got um, this guy. I believe I found this at a uh, thrift store. Matt Zarley. Uh, he's a, a pop singer, basically. And uh, yeah, don't know what else to say about him. I, th I, had, I had owned this CD a long time ago. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this actually might have been the one that I found at the thrift stores might have actually been the very same CD that I got rid of all those years ago. I don't know, but anyway. Uh, so, yeah. Pop. Don't know what else to say about him. Then uh, this is another CD that I inherited from my sister. Haven't really gotten into this guy yet, but hopefully I will at some point. Uh, Warren Zevon. This is the very best of, or the best of Warren Zevon. Um, genius. The best of Warren Zevon. Uh... Sorry, I should have been uh, showing the back some more of these. But I keep forgetting to mention this. I should have mentioned this at the beginning of the video. If you'd like me to talk about any of these CDs uh, in more depth, let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to do a, you know, CD spotlight by request thing at some point, maybe. But uh, yeah, I got to. Uh, I, I need to listen to this one more since it came from my sister's collection. And now, finally, the very last in the alphabet with. Um, did I have? Oh, that's right. I used to have ZZ Top but uh, on CD, but I picked up the vinyl records, and so that's why I don't have him here. I was going to say, why isn't ZZ Top last? But no, this guy is. ZZ Top used to be last, but now it is Buckwheat Zydeco. Yes, Zydeco music is 
one of the least genres I am into at all. I really have to be in a mood to listen to Zydeco, trust me. Um, but this one, I think this one was at a thrift store. Or actually, maybe it was on a freebie shelf at House of Records. I can't remember. Anyway, uh, this is the best of Buckwheat Zydeco. Decided I need to, needed to have at least one Zydeco or uh, Cajun music CD in my collection. And uh, it's actually kind of uh, it's actually kind of fun, as I recall hearing. Uh, I bought a raccoon. That's the name of the first song on here. So, how could I not have a CD with a song title like that on it? Not that I'm necessarily into raccoons particularly, but uh, you know, just those those whimsical song titles, you know. Anyway, so yes, the best of Warren Zevon is the final title in my rock and pop and vocal section of my whole darn CD collection. But remember, there's still plenty to more to come with my instrumentals, compilations, soundtracks, holiday albums, comedy spoken word, and I'm going to top the whole thing, whole thing off with my box sets. I'm going to give you a tour of my box sets. But uh, that is more to come. So yes, uh, don't consider this the end of my whole darn CD collection. Far from it. Though the rest of it is not nearly as big as my rock and pop and vocals. So don't worry, it won't go on forever. Anyway, that'll do it for this video. Be sure to like it if you liked it. And before you go, drop me some feedback in the comments section. I'd love to know what you think. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell icon to catch my new videos, and click my username to browse my old videos. Links to my socials and my favorite fellow YouTubers are in the description below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.